Alrighty. We are back for round two. Um, so yeah, so still um, stopped about the midpoint uh, plot twist uh, to get a little a little break and some food uh, and back. Uh, so what I'm doing now is uh, pretty similar as before, just kind of going through taking as many line by line notes as I can, uh, and then um, you know on the second read through I'll kind of do it off uh, offline, uh, and then I'll be going through in a lot more uh, a lot more detail, just kind of putting all the notes together into kind of a cohesive whole, um, something that hopefully is uh, pretty readable. So back we uh, back we get uh, to the uh, read through. Uh, so the last kind of thing we left off on was um, they were kind of thinking about leaving, but then I went into Todd's past and saw how his parents passed away, um, and then we're going from there. Think not of your dead family or their bodies stripped of flesh. Todd sniffles. Think of not of their red blood running down like river, running like river, like a river. Uh, let's see, page 46. Uh, that's just a little spelling thing. Um, the trees that murdered your parents. When I count to five, <clears throat> you will awaken. One, two, three, four, five. Todd's eyes snap open. Oh my god. I'm so sorry, Todd. I had no idea. Also, it seems a little bit random that Erica would suddenly have, like, a hypnosis power. Um. Uh, something to set up earlier. Okay, two trees are dragged in the forest floor. The ladies are still impaled. Bodies are still impaled. The native says that. It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. Not you, man. It's not your fault. Um, maybe I'm not such a bad psychologist after all. We should celebrate. Erica holds up a crack pipe. That's why you're my best friend. Crack smoke swirls up the glass pipe. Tells people to expand endless black holes. A Yule log clake sighs under the counter. Todd and Erica dig into the cake with plastic force. We've stayed here way too long. Don't you feel weird knowing that Chuck's body's on the other side of that door, Eric's POV? The bedroom board twists and blurs. She's high. Almost forgotten about that. What about Dylan and Julie? The log... The log probably got... Oh my god, why the hell are we still here? And that's kind of that note on 47. Um, you know, the audience has been asking them... Asking that question for a little while. Erica... She snaps out of it. Well, I don't know if you can snap out of the drug that quickly. Um, yeah, right. You think Dylan would risk his bodily fluids in his back seat? Todd and Erica drop their forks. I'm so effing high right now. Todd and Erica lug their backpacks on the path and they notice the light is on the barn. That must be them. They go to the barn. Blood and guts everywhere. Oh my god, what happened? Todd snags an axe from the workbench. I don't know. Todd and Erica run down the gravel road. Erica trips and falls forward on the ground. She turns to her left. Erica's POV. The squirrel churns on the neck of Dylan's headless body. The squirrel. <sighs> go, go, go. So a squirrel is kind of an odd image. And not really in context. But I'm glad... Um, okay, choose and tell them, oh my god! Go, go, go! They run to the gravel road. Moments later, the massive oak tree is falling on the road, blocking the gate. How the hell did this get here? This makes no sense. Erica desperately tries to open the gate, but it's no use. She rattles a friends in frustration. F! Todd tries to push the tree, but it's too heavy. They run to the gate. It's over a mile away. But I thought the car was... 
I thought they walked in. You guys to climb over. Toss the back of the gate. The other side gives Erica a boost. She climbs. Come on, get in the car and lock the doors. Todd, F and climb. I can't. I'm afraid of heights. How many phobias do you have? I'm sorry. I was son of a plane who watched my parents plunge to my death. Branches. So yeah, I mean, so for me, that's something that I think is a reveal that could happen a lot earlier. Exhaust pipes over the branches, car splutters and bangs as Erica turns it around to face the gate. She rolls down her window. Get out of the way. Whoa, what are you thinking about? Move now. Revs the eight cylinder engine. Todd drops the axe and dives on the side of the road as it rams the the gate, crashing into the stump and pushing the tree over the cliff. The hood of the firewood forms. F interesting so the the branches doesn't even matter so then that's a fact that I would really consider because you have two things stopping the car um, I think that's a bit redundant um, because one is the branches and the exhaust pipe and the other is her running it into the the, the, the tree um, so I would go with one or the other not both um, because it sounds it's just like it sounds like just things were kind of thrown at the problem uh, of like, how do we block the car? Okay, where Todd's pass. Smoke crack. They go to the barn. They go to the barn and discover Dylan's body. And they run for it. A tree blocks the road, same as earlier. And they, let's see here. Three blocks of road the same as earlier, and they, um... Todd gets stuck at the gate, unable to jump. I want to clarify. Hello, Fox. Hello. Fox is jumping in for her nightly reading as well. Yeah. Hi. Say hello. I shot the showered fox. The very freshly showered fox. <laughs> Clean and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to keep playing the Arca, I kind of just picked up uh, picked up where we left off uh, right before uh, we ate. The what? Uh, if you want to read Erica's lines when you're taking oh, a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no uh, no 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 pressure. Uh -huh. um, but if you uh, if you uh, feel like it i'm down did i miss anything um so yeah i'm just actually doing a recap because it's better it's 
it's always good whenever you're taking notes to like write the plot down so you can actually spit it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so they found so Todd and Erica found Dylan's body and, and they ran for the car, but the the, the car was packed with 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 branches. Uh, and then she, you know, Todd got stuck a little while back because of a tree falling over the path, mm-hmm. uh, and he was afraid to, to kind of scale that, um, or like afraid to jump over the fence because he also had a fear of heights phobia. It's kind of a combi- a phobo a phobo combination. And then she tried to start the car, but she ended up ramming it into the tree to hopefully free Todd. <laughs> Get in my way. Okay, interior. Erica, Erica, Todd shakes her shoulders. I'm okay. The car is fucked. Erica's dazed and confused. Uh, I would I would avoid using a direct movie title reference. Um, just because it takes you out of the moment, especially during the read. Uh, I couldn't leave without you. This isn't what I wanted. I was trying to do the right thing for our family. That's what you talking about. Come on, get out. So it seems like a bit off dialogue. So most of your dialogue has been actually really good. Seems like Todd's like become a gangster suddenly. <laughs> Jeff Joker? <laughs> what are you talking about, Willis? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Todd pries open the door, unhooks Erica's seatbelt, and helps her from the car. I've ruined everything, everything we planned. Let's go back to the cabin. We'll figure out a new plan there. The car engine explodes, <gasps> knocking Erica and Todd to the ground. They stumble to their feet. Todd helps support Erica as she limps back towards the cow and logs POV. Log follows Todd and Erica. Todd and Erica. Turn back to see Log is rolling towards them. Todd screams. Log rolls faster and faster. Run! Erica looks back, sees a log. Tark and Erica sprint as fast as they can. Continues rolling. They scream. Leave us alone! Log's POV. Log gets closer and closer. Exterior log cabin. Moments later. Todd and Erica reach the cabin. They fling open the door and the dart inside just as Log's POV. Log smashes it against the door as it slams shut. Log rolls down the stairs into the path. It vibrates. Bright orange lights glow from within the clack cracks. Erica and Todd push the couch against the cabin door. The table pushes the coffee table towards the, towards the couch, and Todd helps lift it up. Suddenly, a branch crashes through the window. Erica screams. So good action overall. Uh, I like I like the. I think when you're you're in a scene and you're actually building a scene, you do a fantastic job. I think the thing that does kind of hurt your read is when you're when you're putting jokes into a scene that may not necessarily fit um so i actually think this is reading really well um so yeah um so good scene and tension great description around chase dives to the floor tries to open the trap door but it's locked it's locked um Yeah, sometimes it's better not to restate stuff like that. Like, she, we just saw it's locked by a padlock. You don't have to say it twice. Yeah, it doesn't matter because it's for Todd to know, I guess. And then the branch shadows the kitchen window, flattens the branch. You log take on the counter. The one from the gate. I still am not sure how this log is doing this attack. So, like, the dynamics of how is the branch... It's a log, Jeffrey. But it's attacking with, like, this, it's one, like, little gimp branch, I think. So I, so I picture the log as this, like, little log with a little branch sticking out of it. Mm. And I think it's just that one little gimp branch just, like, breaking stuff. But it doesn't... Can it, like, get longer, though, right? Maybe. I don't know. Ask Erica. <laughs> she, got, <laughs> she, got, she got tapped by it. She sure did. How the branch, how's the branch to the window actually work? Might I struggle picture this without more description? Does the logs uh, and this goes to I think an overall note, which is I would give give us 
a more in depth addiction to the log. Not earlier. How it moves, rolls, and what it looks like. Some of its movements don't feel possible with the initial picture of it that I had. Try the key. What key? The one from the gate. Erica pulls the key from her pocket. She tries to lock. It won't open. It's not working. Stand back. Swings the axe, busting the lock off. Eric lifts the door as they descend down the stairs. Basement night. Light bulb flickers on. The trapdoor bolts shut from the inside. Shrunken heads, bones, and feathers dangle from the floorboards and the ceiling. Cobwebs and bones. Workbench for weapons. He shuffles through ages, papers of voodoo incantations. It's your family, your family was into some freaky voodoo shit. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Todd. <laughs> maybe? And syrup, apparently. <laughs> the old bottle labeled Jackson's Family Syrup on a dirty old shelf. A slumber proposal to purchase land unsigned and dated 1954. A slumber was trying to buy this land. There must be 50 offer letters. Leave now or face the consequences. Guess your family really didn't want to sell. Erica picks up a framed black and white photograph of Amelia Jackson. Erica is the spitting image of a great great grandmother. Todd notices a striking resemblance. Holy shit! It's my great grandmother, Amelia. That's spooky. She's beautiful. She was, yeah. Ow. Erica hunches over, holding her groin. What's wrong? Nothing. Just cramps, I guess. Oh. She gonna give birth to a tree baby? Oh, God. That's some crazy stuff. Erica falls to the floor. Erica, are you okay? It hurts. Erica's in the fetal position, clutching her knees close to her chest. Todd runs her hand, his hands through her hair. Is he just like running his hands through her hair? Like, it's okay. Mm. okay, that makes more sense. Don't touch me. Erica scrambles to the stairs. Erica? She unlocks the door and flips open the basement. Four members of the metal band... Death face truck through the trees. I guess this is interesting. So she runs off. That's a different scene. Yeah, I know. So it's like a new scene, but that's a bit late for like a complete jump. But they're middlehead one, two, three, and four, so I'm guessing they all get killed pretty quickly. Um, but I wonder what they're going to change in terms of this story. Uh, I would be worried about introducing new stuff without like a really big clear path to change. Um, um, okay. Uh, so first off, so what happens next? And then, uh, they run to the basement, chased by the log and find a bunch of deeds from her family. And a bunch of offer letters. Growing pain. And it runs off. Leaving Todd. In the basement. Four members of the middle band Death Face trudge through the trees. They wear black t shirts, okay, black. Um, nice description, tattooed arms. Lumberjack killer sounds dope. Just an urban legend, man. No dick, it's for real. So there was this feud. Dude, I heard that in high school. Can I finish? Log six under a tree branch, the band members and Jimmy pass underneath. Jog tro jog hor nuggets on comer at dos. You said it, Johan. So there was this feud. Fued? I think, is that how you spell feud? It's F-E-U-D. -E Not Fued. <laughs> Probably just a misspelling. Yeah. Uh, 56. Between the Jackson family that owns land, a bunch of lumberjacks went missing. 
What happened to them? Maybe old Jackson used them for fertilizer. Okay, so I would be really, really... If this is how the backstory comes to light, I would really think through that decision. Um, because I think having your backstory and the mystery getting revealed by some random middleheads walking through the forest um, is is probably a... It's probably the least effective way to do it because you want your characters to discover it because hopefully the backstory relates to them and who they are. So I only learn about myself as a character if I discover my backstory and the true ghost of my past on my own. Um, so having somebody else just kind of deliver that to the audience is is almost cheating a little bit because you're you're taking that revelation out away from your character. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but that's what it feels like, and I would be really nervous from a story structure perspective that this is happening. Um, prefer to have... Can I finish? Anyways, nobody knows. Lumberjacks escape and chop their heads off for the revenge. The Ari Traden. Jimmy drops his light kitten bounce. Drops his light kitten bounce, startling the middle heads. This is like a good spot. Do you have anything more uh, black, like urban? Dude, this is so racist. Like, no, like, you know, like deathy. Off Jim's look. Erica slams the bathroom, so we're back to the... Okay, if I if I don't see these middle heads again, I'm gonna be really sad. Um, Erica slams the bathroom door shut and drops into the toilet. She pulls down her pants and doubles over in pain. Erica cries, "What the f?" Erica reaches like she digs around in there, searching for the source of her discomfort. She pulls out a bloody acorn. Erica expects the acorn closely. She smiles, "Hi, baby." Erica, <laughs> she had an acorn baby. Um, funny, but far-fetched, uh, it's kind of it, like, it's hard to describe because I kind of know you're going for that airplane vibe where it's just so off the walls and so ridiculous, but even in those things, you need like one truth, right? Like you need the anchor that I, the one thing that I believe that's actually logical or else I can't ever really find my mooring. Like I kind of like a ship floating around. Um, so like an airplane, the one thing that they never joked about was that the airplane was in trouble. It was a very silly movie and it was like all over the place, but they all had the same goal, which is get the airplane on track, get the airplane on track. And you know, they had silly jokes like the old grandma speaking jive and stuff like that, but it was all to like get the airplane on track. And it was, everything was driving for that, even in such a silly, ridiculous movie. So I think that you really need that anchor of truth that is that is undeniable in every single scene that nobody jokes about. Uh, like, cause no one's like, ha ha, let the airplane crash. Duh. And, and like, you know, cause, cause then that would lose that, that driving credibility. Cause you still need that driver in your story as well as your, you know, comedy. So if you're going for that silly airplane, like comedy, um, you know, you still have to have that one truth. And I don't think we have that yet. Um, they want to, Hot as toast in here. <laughs> yeah. Let me open one of the Bobo's windows. I'll be right back. Ooh. Yeah, he's a nuke you. Be careful.
the door. On the door. On the door. On the door. Uh oh. You in trouble? Well, now that I know, how are they really going to not get uninvestigated? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll protect you. Okay. Plastic container with air holes in the lid. And gently places the air cord. So suddenly, Erica, ha Erica has changed. Or her whole demeanor is completely different. Uh, and I don't have a good point of, like, reference. I think you're suggesting that she may have been this crazy from the beginning. But she acts in a way that, that would... There was not as many signals uh, early on. So it just it feels like she suddenly is becoming, like, a tree mother. Um, You, few clues about the family legacy, but that is through dialogue. We need to see behavior early on that shows this is possible. Also, not clear when she changed a crazy person log lady Erica opens the container says a tissue paper in the bottom and she place the acorn inside twists the back on admires the specimen I protect you shoves the container back in her purse a smile on Erica's face transitions back into one of panic and fear Todd Erica pulls up her pants so now yeah her transitioning mental state is not clear Erica finds it on the table. It's time to face my fears. It's time to face my furs, Todd. Uh, that's the thing. Like you're you're mixing a lot of these different types of comedy, and it's just like I would really caution with like the nyak 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 nyak, like when it, those kinds of jokes. When you have, when you're doing other types, like you should either go all or nothing on like a type. But you're kind of. It, it feels like. It's kind of hard to know what to believe as the reader at this point because there's just like so much stuff happening and I don't know what's a joke and what's real. Uh, and I think there's like you really need that anchor of truth. Uh, you have to have it or else I think this story will be hard to – it will be hard to really make it work. I think it's physically possible to pull it off. I don't know if it's there yet right now. Um, but it will be extremely hard without some sort of like vein of truth. Like we have to get out of here. Everybody agrees we have to get out of here, not stop and make out, not do a crack pipe. We have to get out. And then they have that goal, and they can go to the car and try to stop the car. And they can go to the... But there's not even, like, a real reason they're there, except to maybe, like, help Todd overcome his fears. Uh, but then that also becomes, like, a bit ambiguous. So, like, I would really, really push towards, like, a single goal. I'm going to write that down in my overall. Uh, you know, need a single... Anchor truth around a goal. Mm, it's a beautiful song. Mm Middleheads deliver exposition. That's what I'm going to call that part. Uh, because I can't think of uh, Erica births the tree antichrist. Oh, the cabinet's empty. The barricade and the furniture has been pushed aside of the door. Time to face my first. Todd, shit. Erica crumbles a note and tosses in the fire. Erica walks through the trees holding the fire poker. Todd? A branch cracks 
Um, turns around, Todd, is that you? Pulls the tree branches to exterior grave at night. A woodpecker drills into a maple tree. Erica steps in the small clearing. Two headstones are lit by the full moon as the fog rolls. The epitaphs read Damius Jackson and Amelia Jackson. Erica approaches the grave. Uh, what? Is she unearthing her grandmother's grave? Erica, she kneels down in front of the air, Amelia's headstone and traces the outline of her name with her thumb and index finger. It's time to take back what's ours. Erica steps between the headstones, turn the face of the moon, then counts her steps as she walks north. One, two, three. The breeze rustles leaves. Four, five, six. The woodpecker flaps its wings and flies away. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Erica smiles and drops her knees to the base of a great maple tree. She uses the fire poker to turn over the dirt and then digs with her hands. Erica pokes into the hole with a fire poker. Knock. She clears the dirt, revealing a secret wooden door. How does she know that's there? I think so. It, it sounds like she was a plant the whole time by the log. And like she's working with the log to murder her friends. And apparently stop the like the woodworkers from taking over her family's land. Uh, I'm I'm thinking. I don't know why she ended up deciding to murder all her friends. I really there. I hope there's a reasoning behind that. Um, I'm you know, because that seems kind of random that she's like, hey, like I'm gonna go fulfill my family's legacy, and I'm just gonna kill all my friends because yellow. Um, so I hope that you know there's a good um, a good reason for that. Todd disappears to face his furs. Uh, and she goes to her grandmother's grave and uh, she goes to her grandmother's oh, my knee is killing me. And Unearths the secret door she knows of. Ooh, beautiful. You can turn that up a little bit. Oh, gorgeous. She knows of. Now we, well, we truly know now that she was a plant. And not just. Under the log's influence. Erica drops several feet down to the pitch black. Foam's area looking pink. Click a row of fluorescent lights flicker on, illuminating a long dark tunnel lined with tree roots and blue rubber tubing. The tubes begin with each tree trunk run up through. Skeletons are bound in chains to the tree roots. The same kind of chain links which hung from Lumberjack's wrists who killed Demius and Amelia. Erica wakes her way to the tunnel, averting her eyes from the old bones. Eric arrives at the middle door. It looks oddly out of place in this underground dirt tunnel. Pulls out the gold key on the necklace and inserts it into the lock. The key locates. I don't know what that means. I guess it fits. Uh, the door opens. Exterior forest night. The middle heads have found their perfect spot for photography shoot. The lights are set up and four band members are posed next to the rotting carcass of a dead moose. Dude, it effing reeks. Good. Use that. They pose more looking disgusted. Flash. So I wanted to talk to you about your rate. Uh-huh. Flash. We super appreciate you giving us a deal, but we think about it, and we think 100 bucks is a fair price. You're kidding, right? Jimmy lowers the camera. We could have rented the camera from less than that from Jody. Jody's not an effing photographer, okay? It's not just the camera or even the lights or the editing software. It's about the effing time, time spent training, coming up with concepts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How about we give you 50 bucks in a case of beer for driving us out here? Yeah, man. That's worth more than the gas money. F this. Simi drips up his light and leaves. Varhas has problem. So the middleheads fight. This should have been in earlier. Fight about pricing, yeah. Definitely feels pretty random at this point. Um, page 61. Like, even if it factors in into the story, it still might need to go since it's not set up earlier. It's actually the writing tip you wrote is you don't want to introduce new characters past page 50. 
and the writing tips and, and for you know i think it's one of those things where gosh i think it's actually word verbatim yeah. uh one of the writing tips um we submitted i'll look it up but um but, but that's why and it's not necessarily that they can't make the story work better uh the problem is really is that um you know, they're not set up. So I don't know them. So it feels like a deus ex machina if they change the story for the positive. And it feels like a random, like, brick thrown into a gears if it goes negative. So there's really no good way to factor it in because it's not set up. And, and your note is right. Um, I'm going to look. Avoid introducing new characters after page 50. By Smish Moosh. Um, but no, I mean, it's okay. And that's like the same thing with me, right? Like I give notes that I still struggle with. Uh, but this, but this is a good example of, of why that's true because you kind of run into this dilemma where it feels, um, no matter how they factor into the story, it feels very convenient either to create more drama and conflict or convenient to like get the heroes out of a problem. So yeah, I'm going to copy and paste it in. Erica stands at the top of a middle walkway looking out of the giant warehouse. The warehouse contains large metal vats, pipes, science equipment, thousands of drums on the floor, labeled with the same affection as Emilia's headstone. Workstation. Jackson Family Syrup. Approaches the stainless steel workbench. Erica switches on a light that shines under the clear plastic incubator. She cranks a dial labeled Moistness. Erica removes a plastic container from her purse and holds it under the light. That's pretty funny. I think it's uh, just the word moist makes me yeah. laugh. Well. Okay. Erica gazes at the acorn. The acorn has doubled in size. Erica's wild eyes well up with tears. You're growing so fast. Erica gazes at the acorn like a mother with a newborn child. She carefully opens the incubator door and lowers the acorn into a small patch of soil. Spray a fine mist of water. Closes the glass door and holds her hand against the exterior. You're safe now. Mommy loves you. Walkway. Erica climbs the ladder and exits the warehouse. I don't know why she would want to cure Todd of his tree fear then. Because if she just wants to go in there and grow her baby log, why does helping... Because she actually does help cure Todd. Or maybe, like, getting pregnant with it made her crazy. Yeah, but then she had the key from the beginning, so she knew about it. Hmm. Yeah, that should make sense. So then, yeah. <laughs> so, why would she help Todd? Maybe it'll get explained, but that's the questions I'm asking right now. Um, log covered in blood, as per usual. Okay. Her eyes go white as you, Erica's POV. I've waited so long for this moment. Erica takes a step towards the log. Everything is set up for us. Log vibrates for our family. Erica takes another step. We're going to take back what's ours. A bright orange light glows from within the log's cracks. Our family legacy! Log vibrations are intensifying. It teeters back and forth. Erica covers her eyes from the glare. Suddenly, log splinters at Erica. No! A dagger-like splinter stabs into Erica's eye. Ah! Falls to the ground. She sobs as blood streams down her face. She holds the splinter and stands with one fast motion. She yanks the splinter. Ah, I hate the eye stuff. I can't do that. <laughs> as does Erica's eye. Blood strays from Erica's vacant socket. Splintered eyeball hits the floor and rolls under a skeleton. She screams in pain. She crawls the dirt, writhing in pain, finds the, tries to find her eyeball among the bones and chains log. It tips on its side. Erica in turns and sees with her remaining eye. Erica's POV. Her log rolls toward her. Erica, he just used her for her body. Yeah, man. That sucks. Get it's used. Brutal. It's super brutal. Log gives chase. Erica stumbles to her feet, runs in the tunnel, and slips down a whole mudslide. Erica slides down a hill of mud, river night. Frog croaks on a log. The tug latch is out. Shoots out of the wa mud water slide, landing in a shallow swamp. She's covered from head to toe in mud. Screams. Feels her empty, po empty socket. She cries. I don't blame you. <laughs> Erica collapses backwards in the swamp water, sinking below the mur murky surface. 
Wait, did she die? Okay. No, well, you never know. Yeah. Uh, exterior wood knight. Todd drags a log into the center of the camp. He props them against each other, setting them in teepee formation. Todd chops off the chunks of smaller logs and collects them in a wheelbarrow. Jumps wheelbarrow next to a teepee of bigger logs. Climbs into the center and spreading the kindling across the bottom layer. Matches. Todd lights a match and throws it into the pile. The log quickly engulfs in flames, creating a fortress of fire. Todd turns to the forest, throws out his arms, and spins in circles, yelling for all to hear. What are you waiting for? I'm a... Todd picks up his axe and shakes it at the sky. I'm a human being. Damn it, my life has value. That's another quote from Network. Beware the movie quotes. I don't know how I feel about that. It does... Because I watch a lot of movies. Uh, because, you know, I used to study screenwriting. So it definitely does jar... It definitely does like jar you out of the story when you're like, that's from Network. The movie references, they're just distracting. A bit distracting. Network is a great work. It's a great story, though. Okay. Logs, POV. Log flies into Todd's body, knocking him over towards the bonfire. It knocks the axe out of Todd's hand into the flames. Log rolls backwards, preparing to deliver a massive blow. Why didn't he just fly out of nowhere and chop his head off like the other guy? Todd crawls into space and sends the bonfire. Log falls on him, trapping Todd in the inferno. Log rolls away, satisfied that Todd is done for. In the f that seems very convenient. That this time the log wouldn't actually make sure he's dead. That's like a very st typical, like, movie, like, it's like a typical kind of corny movie moment, and maybe that's what you're going for, where they're like, ah, now, Mr. Bond, I've put you in the, with, with like, one guard and a shark tank, and you're standing on top. I'm gonna go leave and read my email, while I'm sure you will definitely probably fall in the shark tank and not knock out the, do not knock out the one guard that I left here to guard you. Right. <laughs> it's completely safe, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's okay, and I, maybe that's what you're going for, because you do have a lot of these movie references in there. Um, but I, uh, it seems a bit convenient that the log wouldn't make sure. It's kind of, this, this is a very convenient fight. Uh, like, you know, it doesn't knock his head off in the first blow like it did with, with uh, Dylan. Um, yeah, those kind of things do uh, seems a bit convenient. <laughs> the, the log... A Mr. Bond moment. Help! Todd holds his arms over his face to shield from the sparks and embers. Henry reaches in. Todd, Erica, your face. She cups her empty eye socket. Is it hideous? No, it's okay. It's really nasty. Oh, what happened? Effing pencil dick stabbed me in the eye. I bet you'd look awesome with an eye patch. Eric smiles. Let's chop some wood. But why does she suddenly hate the log now? She was like its mother child for a while. Yeah, she was like, oh, our plan. And yeah. Just, like, you think she'd still be like... Maybe it turned on her and she's like super pissed? I don't know. Okay. No one's fed by pricing. Erica drops off the baby in the incubator. And the log turns on her. Tearing her eye out. She sinks in mud. The log comes to finish off Todd. 
and leaves him cooking. But Erica rescues Todd after this log leaves. They're gonna chop wood now. A shotgun, axe, body spray, chainsaw, job, termites, can of pledge, stump remover, cordless drill, zippo, matches, nail gun, woodpecker pokes its head of birdhouse, beaver, saw blades. Weapons are duct taped to create a new badass weapons. Middle is melted down and poured into a mold shaped like a beaver's butt teeth. Titanium chompers are fitted into the beaver's front teeth. It's it's almost so silly. It's just, um, it's a funny montage, but it's just it's kind of like, I I don't know how to describe what what's what it, what it is. Like I think it's just like, it's like an improv. So one of the rules of improv is play the story. Don't try to make jokes, um, because people, I mean, it's improv. Story is gonna come out of the silly situations people are in. And it's more believable and it really packs a punch. But if somebody like interrupts an improv and starts just cracking jokes, it just becomes distracting. And then everything else kind of loses its funniness because you sacrifice the credibility of the story for the one funny joke. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like just it's like it's like Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Like if you're like, hey, we're actually not, you know, adventurers. We're people and we're really silly. Ha ha ha. And, like, it'd be funny that one time, but then, like, the next yeah. scene or two would be kind of lame because you're just thinking about how we're just silly adults, like, playing imagination games. And that's kind of like, you know, it kind of kills your story a little bit um, for the price of a joke. So, like, you are you want to avoid those types of jokes like the plague. And, like, the beaver buck teeth is, is completely tonally dissonant from the tone you've set up. Um, so it is like that, where it's like, ha ha ha, like, this is a really funny joke, and it's funny, like, Beaver with, like, titanium buck teeth is, like, pretty hilarious, but it, it pulls that credibility out of the rest of your story. Uh, so then the next, like, three or four jokes will fall flat, or f will not be as funny, because, you know, it doesn't feel real anymore. And that's, like, a dangerous ground to play in. Um, yeah. That's what I have to say about that. Um... Uh, montage is funny, but a bit random. And you may be... Here for your eye. Tied the fabric on her eye like an eye patch. He's handed her the panties from earlier. How do I look? Good, yeah. Todd and Eric load their tool belts. And strap on the various weapons. Tuttle holds an axe and Erica holds a chainsaw. Beaver is strapped to Todd's chest in a baby Bjorn front pack. What? Well, he has, it's like, it's like, it's like the hangover, sort of. Oh, yeah. Time to earn that A in woodshop. Nice. I actually didn't take woodshop. Shush, don't ruin the moment. Th that's exactly the type of comedy, uh, you know, you know. You know, those are kind of those risky different tones, right? I actually like that one, the Don't Ruin the Moment, better than I like, like, the beaver being strapped to his chest. Um, because that's from the characters. The beaver being strapped to his chest is comedy from the writer. Does that make sense? I think that's what it is. It, there's comedy from the writer, and there's comedy from the story and the characters. And you have to take out the comedy from the writer. Um, I think, yeah, um, the... This draws into the narrative other than the comedy from the writer. That makes me laugh at how clever you are, mm. but it pulls me out of the story. I think that's my big reveal. That would be one of my major notes. <laughs>
Um, so I'm going to bring that down to my overall. Because I think if you just focus on the character comedy and not like the narr like not the writer comedy, I think that would make a huge improvement. Get to the river, then what? Let's just focus on getting there. Setting the dogs... The log drops from a branch and hits Herica's head, knocking her to the ground. Okay. Huh? Want some more water? I want to get some tea. Thanks. Can you give me a soda water? Sure. Instead? Yeah, instead. Thank you. She's the oh, nicest. Yes. Um, okay, are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah, I know. That was a good run. Uh, log rolls several feet away and then stops. It vibrates the orange like glows in the cracks. Todd, release the beaver. That just sounds wrong. Todd kneels down and unstraps the beaver from his baby beaver and the beaver scurries up to the log and splinters shoot out from the log. Todd and Erica duck. Todd takes a splinter in the arm. F! The beaner, the beaver, the beaner, the beaver, the beaver arrives at the log and takes a giant bite with his titanium chompers. The log spins in its place like a dreidel on speed. The beaver goes flying. Smack! Hits a tree. It grunts and the beaver... I think I really do like your action a lot. Like, your action lines are very vivid. Like, I can visualize the action. I really like that. I mean, I think you have such a good talent with, with scene, but... I think, you know, setting up, like, a really core story structure under your comedy is probably where you want to go next with this, really. Um... The log spins into the place like a dreidel on speed. Beaver goes flying smack, hits a tree, grunts and scuttles away. Let's cut to the chain. Erica rubs the chainsaw. She charges the log. Okay, so they're going to chop wood now. A montage. And they go to confront the log. The log attacks. Okay. Todd whips the nail gun from his tool belt and fires. Shoom, shoom. Nail after nail pierces the log's bark. It tries to roll away, but nails get stuck in the ground. Log vibrates. That can't be good. Erica pulls out a jar of termites and twists open the lid. The termites scurry through the grass and mulch toward the log. As the termites climb over the log, they crawl into the cracks of glowing orange light. The tiny insects emit high-pitched screams as the fire within the log incinerates them. Bang, bang. Eric squeezes up a few rounds with a shotgun. Uh, that should be one word spacing on shotgun. I think so. Well, you had one word earlier, so. Page 69. I'm peeling the woodpecker and pinning it to nearby oak tree. Todd, axe. Todd reaches. Log flies to the air towards his head. Todd pulls out axe body spray. Slow motion. Todd lifts his shirt and sprays his body. Back to the scene. Feel the burn. Slow motion. Todd sparks his lighter as X. His log passes through flames and flies past Todd and Erica to the bushes. Back to the scene. What? You did it. I did. The log rolls out from the branches of Todd and Erica's hug and jump. Flames are not quickly. Erica turns to the log. is completely still. Check if it's dead. Are you effing nuts? Erica gives him a Todd slowly approaches the log. He reaches out and places two fingers on one of the cracks. Under its branch. It's gone. Kind of pledge? Is that lighter fluid? She does the log and lighter fluid, then uses lighter fluid to those flames the pledge away. The log completely engulfed in flames. Engulfed is, is completely engulfed in flames. 
Um, page 71. I don't do too many notes uh, in grammar and spelling except the ones I see. Todd and Eric are traversed a cliff down to the river's edge. They slide down the muddy hill, leading to the same swamp Erica fell into after the mudslide. Right now, what, Erica? Erica sees the entrance to the tunnel. Erica? Erica turns back to Todd. Sorry, what? What do we do now? We roll. Erica points to a long log floating in the river near the shore. Yeah, right. Smoke billows from the forest behind them. A massive fire rages. Whoa, when did a massive fire come? Did the log catch everything on fire? So, like, a little bit of flames from Axe Body Spray killed the log. Also seems a little bit far-fetched. <laughs> Um, because you've set it up really well as something that's super strong, I just don't see Axe Body Spray taking that down. And I know it's probably going to come back because we're only on page 71, but still, like, the, I don't believe the characters would think it's that feeble, uh, at this point either. Uh... Yeah, I was gonna do four pages of notes, but I'm already on six. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not thorough, yeah, cool. I'm still gonna do like a full coverage, so you'll probably get like ten pages of notes. Smish moosh. Bargain! Yeah. <laughs> Great, now what, Erica? Erica? Erica turns back to thought, sorry, what? What do we do now? We roll. So now Erica's being like super mean and crazy. But she destroyed her own family legacy because she wanted to kill the log. What? It's going to be easier. Okay, so then I'm going to be... Uh, the long attacks. But they counter... Because matter from it, like he destroyed, and runs off to, and makes, in a fire, that somehow started. I don't know how that fire started. I'm gonna look back and in my second mm -hmm. read and see, but that's still blowing my mind a little bit. Uh oh. Yeah, it's freaking out. Graphical. Yeah. Graphical. Well, Weird. <laughs> Don't get a seizure. <laughs> Is that a primary reason? Yeah. 
It's working, stay focused. Shit, the log. Erin turns almost losing her footing. I can't look. I went underwater. I can log swim logs. Bob, log bobs up to the surface. The flames are out. The current quickly carries it downstream. God, I hate trees. Log is gaining on them. See, that's funny. That's in character comedy. I like that comedy. Oh, that's good. That's good. Like, you're like, I don't fucking blame you. I would hate fucking trees too. Um, actually, I'm at the wrong section of my notes. Okay, there we go. Page 73. Love the hate trees line. This is in character. Comedy equals fantastic. I know this seems like a lot. So, so it's, it's solvable. I'm going to distill this down into simpler stuff. Um, to a few goals. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Todd falls into the log and clings down for dear life as the current continues to guide into the river. Blood gushes from her arms. Erica's leg like, slips between some rocks. Erica's eyes open. Bubble we'll escape her now. She screams. Erica struggles to put her leg free, but it's stuck. Log sticks to the water, floating in front of Eric's face. Vibrates, tiny bubbles emitting from his cracks. Orange light glows. Erica can't pull her leg free, so she reaches for it and pulls the log closer to her face. Places her mouth around the log's branch. Her air cheeks expand as she sucks in a giant breath of air. The orange light flickers. I can find one to free her. Did she like suck out its soul or something? <laughs> Not sure what's transpiring there. Page 74. Not 100 percent sure. She either gave it a BJ or she sucked out its soul. <laughs> one of the two. What's yeah, like, happened there? Either a BJ or a Dementor or Kiss. <laughs> or a Log Dementor Kiss. One of the two, really. Okay, managed to free her leg and swim to the surface. The surface of the water is quiet. Gas for air. The branch appears before X face. Is out on a limb, holding out the branch for Erica. She grasps on Todd. Todd drags Erica into the beach. They collapse on the sand. A slumber company looms in the background. Todd inspects the room. You okay? Yeah, good. Sorry I yelled at you. Don't be. I deserved it. <laughs> what? No, you didn't. <laughs> she was freaking retarded. You help me, Erica. Todd brushes the hair stuck in Erica's panty eye patch. I'm so tired. Come here. Hold each other until both their eyes drift out. They fall asleep. Sirens blare in the distance. The fire rages through the trees. Maple tree falls and knocks over Damus's headstone. Underground tunnel. Fire sweeps through the tunnel of skeletons and trees. The middle door does not catch fire. <gasps> the acorn shell cracks open and an orange light glows from within. <gasps> So the her baby seed was still alive. Did she try and burn it? She tried to burn it. Well, her family legacy like it. burned. Well, I think that's why. She maybe knew that her little baby was safe. I don't know. I think that was it. I think mm -hmm. she knows it's safe. So she's cool with that. <laughs> yes, Charred bodies of death face lay strewn. Oh, rip metal band. Okay, now I definitely believe that, that they were absolutely unnecessary to the story. Oh, they're dead? Yeah, they just died. How? In the forest fire. And why were they there? To to, to give exposition oh, and die okay. and die well. Oh. Poor metal band. Poor metal band. That's all I do at work. I mean, just, I what's the numbers? <laughs> I give them exposition on our data analytics, and then they kill me. Yeah. Poor metal band. Um, okay, well that's that, that's okay. I'm just being silly. We're kind of tired and loopy, so forgive us for being. Uh, we don't want to make light. I know this is actually. A lot of your hard work and um but it's a comedy screenplay so i figure we can be silly yeah <laughs> um 
because, in fact, comedy breeds more comedy, so it's doing its job. Um, but uh, I would think that um, metal band dying with without contributing... Okay, photographer. Photographer snaps a photograph of the deceased middleheads. This would make a great album cover. Close in the photograph. Oh my gosh. What happened? It's <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, so like the like the death metal band's dead and charred, mm -hmm. and then the the crime photographer takes a picture, and then she shows the image to the investigator, and then she says, "Take a look." The investigator is like, that would make a great album cover. And then you see the photograph, and it's like the dead metal band. <laughs> it's a death That's metal so band. <laughs> oh, man. Riverbank morning. Eric is remaining eye photos open. She awakens in Todd's arms and pokes his cheek. Good morning. Morning. I slept like a log. Erica sits up. At least you didn't sleep with a log, huh? Nothing. What? <laughs> 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 Whoops. A little Freudian slip. Yeah. I still don't know how Todd didn't realize that he didn't have sex with Erica, but she still acted like she was satisfied afterwards. You know, even though she had like weird sap all over her too. Yeah. They lock eyes. Erica, I. Shh. Erica kisses Todd. They make slow, passionate love on the beach. <laughs> they just love boning in like these horrible situations. Um. Still not sure why Eric or sorry, Todd Todd hasn't realized that he didn't have sex with Erica sex with Erica the first time and why they love boning after all this horrible stuff doesn't seem like character growth Inappropriate sexy times. Or like sexy times at the worst times. Like times after my friends die. <laughs> okay, Chompers, a titanium tooth beaver, presents a branch to his lady beaver. The beavers proceed to mate on the beaver dam, flapping their tails. The woodpecker, one woodpecker drills another. Two raccoons bang on a nearby riverbank. Erica rolls off of Todd. So, how was it? Was it okay? Better than okay. Two, no splinters this time. Todd laughs. Wait, what? Uh, how is she? Uh, still, that just gives me chills thinking about that. But Lod's POV. Lug watches the two lovebirds atop of the hill. So it's still alive. Plays there because here it's finally over. Todd, you're not hyperventilating. You're right. You did it. You conquered your fear of trees. Kind of ironic now that I think about it. They kiss again. Couldn't have done it without you. Eric, you changed my life. You're going to make a great psychologist. Tell that to my mother. Fuck your mother. They laugh. On the top of the hill, continuous. Log uses branch to hitch onto the chains holding the stack of telephone poles. Log vibrates by orange. Pulling a chain and releases a stack of telephone poles. So there's like a... Log uses branch to hitch onto the chains holding a... St so wait, 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 wait. I don't see where log. I don't know. I, this telephone pole stack seems very out of the blue. You may want to give a little bit more scene description on page 79. Twin the chain, lease the poles. An avalanche of 60 foot poles roll down towards them. Oh my gosh, Ron! Flashback dot red blood drips down the tree. Remember only the trees, the trees that murdered your parents. Todd f pushes Erica out of the way. Todd faces the trees. 
Todd is flattened by the log avalanche. I guess he faces fears? Seems like a really stupid way to face your fears. <laughs> Seems like a bad way to face your fears. I do like Lago Winch. The poles bounce and crush Todd's body as they fall into the river. Hopefully my audio didn't cut out. Um, Todd, no! Todd's body is a crumpled heap of flesh and bones. Erica sobs. Okay, Todd's dead. Erica's POV. Logs rolling on the road. At least he got laid. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of the log this time. Yeah. Good for him. Just her eye patch. Hobbles up the hill towards the road. Exterior woods day. Erica runs through the trees, exhausted, tears rolling down her face. She pushes her way through the branches, determined to survive. Erica stumbles out of the trees and onto the gravel logging road. She looks both ways. No sign of the log. Erica lumbers up the road when honk honk, a massive logging truck approaches. Driver's POV. Erica waves to the driver. She cries tears of happiness and relief. Erica grabs the arm hold and takes the first step into the truck. Erica's head pops into the cab. Thank God you stopped, please. The driver's hand reaches for Erica, a red plaid sleeve. A chain hangs from his wrist in a zombie-like hand. Erica's POV. It's the lumberjack killer! So that seems kind of random, because I still don't know why they... I mean, there's obviously like a beef between the maple syrup people and lumberjacks, but I don't really know why. They just seem to hate each other's guts. Uh, I'm not sure why the lumberjack... Don't really know why they hate each other. Erica screams. Erica drops from the cabin of the gravel road, twists her ankle, scrambles to get away. Erica screams and cries and limps the road away from the logging, drags her leg. The lumberjack, no, help me! Okay, drags the gravel as he falls closely behind Erica. She isn't going very fast. Leave us alone! Erica, of all the people, I think you really deserve to die. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, girl. Yeah. You're kind of a bitch. Page 82. Uh, I have very little sympathy for this character at this point. I do want to fill my plot summary here. Um, they end up boning on the riverbank log releases a telephone pole bundle from a hill nearby hilltop Todd dies facing his log fear by taking one to the face Erica runs off and hitchhikes, but her hitchhike driver, but her car driver is the zombie evil lumberjack. I don't know why he would be a zombie though. Just because he's old? Whatever. I'll put that up here. Just want to organize my thoughts so I can give good recommendations. Uh, Erica's POV. Um, I have a child. Lumberjack grinds his boots down to Erica's twisted ankles. She screams in pain. The axe rises. Erica sobs. Erica's POV. The log rolls down the gravel towards them. Erica smiles through the tears. Erica laughs. Lumberjack sees the log. She pulls her free from the lumberjack's boot. Erica scrambles to her feet as long as the log rolls past her and flies up several feet. The log and the lumberjack face off. The log vibrates. Gravel dust plumes around it. The orange light glows within the cracks. 
Lumberjack raised the axe. A flock of birds fly away. Erica limps up. Help! The Lumberjack charges towards the log. So this is actually kind of concerning. Because the hero has done nothing to stop the Lumberjack. And the log is fighting the Lumberjack. So this is actually really concerning that this character is not actually resolving the conflict. So the underlying conflict should be resolved by Erica. Right now, it looks like it's being resolved by Log. If Erica wasn't there, the same thing would happen. That's a really um, kind of... You may want to think of a way to make sure Erica is in the forefront of that battle. You know, if she's backing her family, make her commit. And, um, you know... Yeah, um, Log is the one facing down. Should be Erica. She has the main character left. Should confront the antagonist. Not the Log. Okay. Aerojack, okay, so Lumberjack, log connects to the blade and it splits in two separate chunks of false ground. Turns to see the log in pieces. Lumberjack chalks the chunks to several more pieces, looks up at Erica, he smiles. Erica screams and continues limping of the road. The chunks of wood glow fiery orange, they vibrate. He walks toward Erica. The chunks of logs suddenly shoot up into the lumberjack's neck, severing his head. The chunks of logs suddenly shoot. Okay. Head drops off like a cork and hits the gravel road. His body crumples to the ground. Black blood spurts out like a fountain. Which right eyes the three chunks of log fall on the ground. The orange light dims. The log is dead. Erica breathes a sigh of relief. A maggot crawls out of the eye hole of the lumberjack's skull. Erica limps in the road. Van drives by. Wait, stop, please. You want some cocaine? The van pulls inside the road. Okay, Erica claps on the ground. Help me. The back door is into the flying van. Smoke billows out. Ash, a long-haired male hippie, steps out of the smoke. Dude, are you all right? Ash takes Erica's hand and helps her to her feet. Please help me. You got it, dude. To the van, Mila. Mila, I feel a hippie. Drop up out of the driver's side. What happened to you? Mila and Ash help Erica back into the van. Typical hippie van. Shagging pillows. Aren't you going to offer our guests some refreshments? Oh, right. Ash opens a small wooden box and some tubing. Erica eyes the drugs. Heroin? What were you expecting? What were you expecting? Never mind. A lighter heats a spoon. <laughs> so then they do drugs! Again? Right after the, the throwdown. Oh, my God. Uh, doing drugs. The hippie is funny because it's a callback. But shows no character growth and seems random because these hippies are new post page 50 editions. Page 50 editions who happen to have the same habits as her friends. So what happened? Erica's eyes drift close to the heroin as drift close to the heroin rushes through her bloodstream. It's a log story. Ash laughs. Laughs as a tube around his arm. <laughs> Blackness. The radio announcer. The charred bodies of the four members of the Death Face, the hit metal band from Scandinavia, were discovered this morning as firefighters still work to contain the blaze of the Jackson family property. Log cabin afternoon. Firefighters discovered the charred remains of Chuck's body. The Jackson family made famous. Okay, the the radio announcer wrap up is really risky um, because you know you want to try to do. The reader should either know. Um, it, it seems like it's kind of like a, not. It's just use. It's just telling what's happening, without, you know, and that's okay in in denouement, which is what this is, but it's kind of risky.
push the hyphen there. <clears throat> Police discovered the blood-soaked barn, more bodies. They discovered the closer to the grounds, lumberjack school. I'm going to fill up my plot up to date. The log and lumberjack kill each other and Erica leaves and hitchhikes to do drugs. Okay, the Jackson family made famous for their maple syrup in the 50s abandoned the land after a well-documented feud with the Ace Lumber Company. I think feud is misspelled again. It's Fwed. <laughs> more, more bodies were discovered close to the grounds of the Lumberjack School, although they remain unidentified this time due to the gruesome nature of their deaths. As an EMT picks up the severed head of Dylan at the bottom of the cliff, foul play is suspected. The lights come to a slumber, scattered chunks of log, the emotionless on the gravel road, suddenly they vibrate. The pieces drag together and flip upright, reforming the shape of a log. An orange light glows from within the crack, log rolls down the gravel road. So if log resurrects, why doesn't lumberjack resurrect? Oh shit. Erica's eyes open. She's high as F. Dude, you okay? My baby. Ash looks to Mila. Mila looks in the rearview mirror. You have a baby? He's just an acorn. An acorn? Mila and Ash laugh. She's high as F. She's just a squirrel trying to get a nut. They laugh. I'll protect you, baby. Erica falls face first in the cushions. Super, one year later. And Axe leans against a wall. An old photograph of Todd in the refrigerator. A red plaid shirt hangs off the back of a chair. A row of bottles from Jackson's family syrup line the counters. Eric stirs a bowl of pancake batter over the sink, tucks her hair behind her ear, revealing her glass eye. A baby coos in the background. It's coming, it's coming. Erica smiles. Pancake batter pours into a frying pan. Good things come to those who wait. Spatula flips on the pancake. Baby soother hits Erica in the arm. Hey, she laughs. Pancake slides out the pan of the plate. You're a fighter, just like your daddy. Guess that's not Todd. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice suspense in the scene. Nice suspense in the scene. Waiting for the... Who baby is it? I wish I could, we could see you now. Jason's family syrup pours into the pancakes. He died protecting us. Erica pulls out the chair and sits down. She stabs a first full of pancakes and pretends it's an airplane. Vroom, coming in for a landing. The baby giggles and screams playfully. And we follow the fork as it flies to the air, guided by Erica's hand as it arrives at horrific half-log, half-human baby squirms in the high chair. Erica feeds pancakes to the baby. There you go, Damius. An orange light glows behind Davius's eyes. Mommy loves you. The end. <laughs> log baby. Evil log baby. I'm just assuming. If you have a name like Damius, you cannot be you cannot be well intentioned. <laughs> Alright, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the plot stuff. Those people claim to scene. Don't see how this is important. Um, Erica now rides home Erica rides home with the hippies and raises her log baby, dealing with the struggles a single mom with a mutant child would have. I wrote <laughs> Is that. Is that your little plot? That's my plot wrap-up. 
Okay, um, so overall, um, you know, I think funny. Definitely funny. Um, you know, a lot of really silly moments, a lot of good moments. Oh, I got like seven pages of notes. So I'm going to distill all this down. So don't let this intimidate you. <laughs> I'm intimidated. You're intimidated? Yes. Well, don't be. Um, I think there's a few things uh, just off the top of my head that I would focus on. Uh, one is build a really solid through line. I can tell you from reading this, you did not plot this before you wrote this. This was a seat of the pants screenplay, and that's okay. Writing seat of the pants is fine, but whenever you do a screenplay like that, just know that you're always going to have more editing to do down the road. So roll up your sleeves, be ready to do some editing. Um, that's kind of where I think uh, a lot of this is going to come is you're going to have to start pulling out the scenes you like and structuring them because you know, first draft of the seat of the pants screenplay is always going to be kind of all over the place. So what you're, what you're trying to do is kind of just take those pieces and form them together into a single through line. So building the through line is really important. I would say at how you handle your comedy uh, is something you really should consider. Read some other screenplays that attempt this. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Um, you know, uh, what are the other horror comedy screenplays that are good? Scream is really good. Mm -hmm. well, um yeah, Scream's comedy. The one that's really silly is not another teen movie, but that's like, I think that's kind of what this is going for, but even that, like, that's kind of like, like, you know, yeah, I guess it's okay. Um, that's almost like, yeah. I mean, it's good. It's just like, they probably are even less heavy-handed, I would say, than some of this stuff. Um, I'm trying to think if I've watched another teen movie recently. Like a silly movie like that? But yeah, but like even they wouldn't like have gone and done drugs right after one of their friends died. Yeah. Like in that movie. They were just like really stupid. Like in that movie. But anyways, but like, so there are certain things that like, you know, to think about. Uh, but I would read some of those screenplays. Uh, and the other thing I would really think about, and I'll be putting this all in my documentation, it's kind of off the cuff, uh, is, you know, um, you know, really giving characters clear goals uh, and, 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 you know, the Erica's character journey um, definitely changed a lot, and her actions didn't align with what I thought her journey was. So her journey seemed to be to get impregnated by this log and to have the log baby. That's pretty much all she goes for, and she's totally down to do that. Um, the log turns on her for reasons I don't know. Um, she brings her friends along to die for reasons I don't know, because she seemed to have real affection for Todd. Um, so those... That she no, but like she did at the beginning. Like she liked him as a friend. And she was like, "I'm gonna here to cure you as your friend." But then she jumped his bones. But then she jumped his bones. After her boyfriend died. Yeah. That was a little out of. I mean, maybe that's her character, but it was sort of like all over the place. It was yeah. Like oh oh, and then it was like they were like together. And then doing crack. <laughs> so yeah, so those types. That they have like feelings earlier on. Absolutely. Like yeah, I think. Clarifying the character's motivations early on. Do like a one-pager. What's their goal? Um, I think those are the things that are making like make making it easier for you to write funny things that break your story structure. Um, because once you have a really good story structure, there are certain jokes you won't be able to write, and that's okay. Um, better to have a good story and not as many jokes than to have a ton of jokes in a story that doesn't have that spine and that really solid structure um so yeah those are kind of my general notes i'm going to be writing this in more detail um kind of putting together something that's like a little bit more distilled uh hopefully uh, and yeah hopefully it helps you really improve the story i think it's a good start i like the premise of the log i think it's really funny um i think that just figuring out really solid story structure um you know that's just what always happens in drafts that are written by the seat of the pants uh you know seat of the pants drafts uh, first drafts especially, uh, and then also, um, you know, making sure that you're, you're handling that comedy in a way that is building your story and not kind of acting at odds with it, I think are the two big notes I have so far. But yeah, good job. I'm excited, and you'll uh, I'll be kind of documenting and putting together all the other stuff uh, pretty soon. So good job. Well done, Smish Smoosh. Um, I know there was a lot of notes. We went through a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to, um, to hopefully make this a really kick-ass finished product. Yeah. Fox, give thumbs up. Thumbs up.